Hello, this is Tony Heller from RealClimateScience.com, the climate guy setting the record straight about climate. This video is titled, Scientists Grant Earth Another Reprieve. Climate experts have just announced that we have until the year 2020 to save the Earth from global warming. This may sound bad, but it's actually good news. Let me explain. In 2009, NASA's top climate expert James Hansen said we only had until the year 2012 to save the planet. Barack Obama has only four years to save the world. That's the stark assessment of NASA scientist and leading climate expert James Hansen, who last week warned only urgent action by the new president could halt the devastating climate change that now threatens Earth. Crucially, that action will have to be taken within Obama's first administration, he added. James Hansen is the scientist who appeared before a Congress on a very hot day in June 1988 and warned them that they needed to do something to stop global warming right away. So previously we only had until the year 2012 to save the planet, and now we have until the year 2020, so that's really good news. But the news gets even better. In 1989, the UN's top environmental official, Noah Brown, warned that we only had until the year 2000 to save the planet from global warming. So we've actually had a 20-year reprieve now. June 30th, 1989, grim forecast. A senior environmental official at the United Nations, Noel Brown, says entire nations could be wiped off the face of the earth by rising sea levels if global warming is not reversed by the year 2000. Coastal flooding and crop failures could create an exodus of eco-refugees threatening political chaos, said Brown, director of the New York office of the UN Environment Program. He said governments have a 10-year window of opportunity to solve the greenhouse effect before it goes beyond human control. I don't actually remember the government solving the greenhouse effect. But I do remember all kinds of threats that were going to destroy the planet in the year 2000. I think we survived them, though. But some things have changed since the year 2000. The medieval warm period has disappeared, and the Little Ice Age has disappeared. The 1990 IPCC report showed that the time around the year 1200 was much warmer than the present, and that we had a very cold period around the year 1600 called the Little Ice Age. Well, the IPCC has since erased the medieval warm period. It's no longer warm around the year 1200, and it's much warmer now. It's amazing how scientists can change the past like that. I wonder if it involves time travel. Or perhaps it involves something different from time travel. Perhaps it just involves collusion and data tampering. In 1995, Dr. David Deming, a geologist at the University of Oklahoma, was contacted by a major researcher in climate who said, we have to get rid of the medieval warm period. And that's exactly what they did. They made the medieval warm period disappear. It doesn't exist anymore. And something else has disappeared since the 1980s. That's the warmth of the 1940s and the subsequent global cooling. It no longer exists in NASA's temperature graphs. Also note that NASA has altered their data far outside their own green error bars. It tells us that the green error bars are meaningless. They're just simply making numbers up. Like the disappearance of the medieval warm period, the disappearance of the 1940s warmth didn't happen by accident. This climate gate email from Tom Wigley at NCAR in 2009 shows that scientists actively discussed ways to get rid of the 1940s warmth, even though they didn't have an explanation for why they were doing it. So if we could reduce the ocean blip by, say, 0.15 degrees centigrade, then this would be significant for the global mean. But we'd still have to explain the land blip. It would be good to remove at least part of the 1940s blip, but we're still left with why the blip. The way that science is supposed to work is that scientists look at the data and develop a theory based on the data. But in climate science, they develop a theory and then create data to match their theory. This is known as policy-based evidence making, not science. And now climate scientists are back at it, rewriting history once again. Climate scientists are now making the famed post-2000 global warming hiatus disappear. Scientists now say that the Arctic is even hotter than they realized before and that the polar bears are about to fall off the ice and drown. Let's look now at what they're making disappear. 
If we go back to 2013, the global warming pause, or hiatus, was central to the IPCC report. This current effort to rewrite history is so bad that even Michael Mann, the guy who made the medieval warm period disappear, disagrees with it. It's been claimed that the early 2000 global warming slowdown or hiatus, characterized by a reduced rate of global surface warming, has been overstated, lacks sound scientific basis, or is unsupported by observations. The evidence presented here contradicts these claims. The current effort to rewrite history must be really bad if even Michael Mann objects to it. And what about those poor polar bears? Well, if we look at maps from the National Snow and Ice Data Center in Boulder, Colorado, we can see that there's actually more ice now than there was on this date in 2006. So I don't think the polar bears are actually drowning. The global warming scam depends on fear, and scientists keep making the same warnings over and over again. They just keep pushing the data out further and further, hoping to keep their funding going for as long as they can. Their warnings don't have anything to do with science. They're simply making dates up, and they're rewriting the past in order to keep their funding alive for as long as possible. Visit Toto on the web at realclimatescience.com. He's been pulling back the curtain on junk science for a long time.